Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to the regular scheduled council meeting for Monday, June 5th, 2017 at 7 p.m. Mr. Collier, you here. Lowry. Here. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Lindsay? Here. Mr. Whitey? Here. Mr. Lowry? Here. Mr. Leslie? Here. Mr. Craven? Yo. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, sir. If you will stand, we'll have tonight's invocation by Councilman Ethan Reynolds. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for us to be able to gather here in public in this the freest country in the history of the world. Father God, let us allow to deliberate. And though we might not all agree on the same opinions, uh, we all respect one another and continue to move the city forward in the best direction, Lord. Let this meeting be productive and let this meeting go smoothly. And Heavenly Father, we ask this in your name. Amen. 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 We'll do pledge tonight. Do the flag here. The pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. on the regular scheduled council meeting for May 15th, Mr. 2017. Mr. <laughs> he red-lighted. Sir. Sorry, I <laughs> He red-lighted. <laughs> My brain is running a little faster than he's talking. <laughs> Mr. Lindsay? Yeah, I got, I got that. He made you say. He's a nice Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds. Yeah. I do have a correction. Here's a correction. Sir? On the last page, uh, I urge people to bring can canned goods, not, not canned cooks. <laughs> I don't know what a canned cook is, but... <laughs> okay. I could use somebody to come cook the can. It could be. Oh, <laughs> 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 you do. That's funny. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Any other... Uh, <laughs> and that's probably what it was. Any other discussion on the council minutes? <laughs> council? Mr. Collier, when you're ready, if you'll make those adjustments, please. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. You ready for the vote? Yes, sir. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Yes. Mr. Craig Yes. <coughs> Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Minutes past seven to zero. Thank you, sir. All right, moving on for communications. At our last council meeting, we had... Uh, presented a proclamation to the Family Youth Initiative and they uh, stopped by today. We we had already presented it and they would gotten a picture, but I did go ahead and give her the official proclamation uh, since we didn't have the the, uh, the official one at the last meeting, but she does have that and I'm going to let you all know that. Moving on to the City Manager's Report. Mr. Bridge, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, members of the public. I'd like to share with you the City Manager's Report. Under informational items, we've got some ATV information. Um, I attach Ordinance 1351 and New Carlisle Codified Ordinance Chapter 476 that deal with those type of vehicles. Um, I know there was some discussion about where they can and can't go. Uh, so I did summarize the latest addition to that. I want to say that was done back in, well, the year's not there. Um, when was that done? 13? 13 ish. Um, so basically, um, if you hear the ATV operation from more than 50 feet away, uh, that is not a good thing. Um, and then there's another blurb on there that says, no operation in a manner that creates dust that is visible from a distance at 50 feet. I don't know that, so I guess if there's a dust trail coming off of it. Um, and then no operation in a manner that creates, but not limited to ruts, grooves, or holes. Uh, the exception to this is does not apply to all-purpose vehicles or utility vehicles that are being operated for agriculture or utilitarian pur pur purposes, such as plowing, snow plowing, cutting grass, or pulling attachments. So uh, based off that short summary I did, I did go ahead and attach, again, both that ordinance and the accompanying uh, chapter, so if the council can have that, it was also posted on our uh, city web, 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 web page with the council packet as well. Um, the other thing that went with the ATV was a Madison Street School 0.5%. I did look for that. I don't know what year this is, was. So if anyone can gauge me about what year it happened, then I can go directly to that minute book and look for that year specific. Was it in that paper that I gave you? Gave in chronological order everything that happened? I don't think it was, but I will definitely look at okay, that resource. I thought it was in there. It might be. Okay. okay. If not, does anyone have a year off the top of your head of when that originally was? 2002, 2000. It had to be yeah. sooner than 
than that. No. No. I think it, I think it was. Because 99. I was a reporter. Yeah. I was a reporter, and that was 1999. You got recall in 2001. No, that was before. But when we purchased it, we knew it was before 2001. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was 1999. Yeah. It was during an election year. It was an election year. Yeah. Right. So maybe it was 99. So I'll start with 1999? Yeah. Okay. okay. Quick way to look is go to the Board of Elections. Okay. Results. Go to archives. Just look at the ballpark.
probably this two year term might be a little bit shorter than two years because usually January of every year certain boards are up certain people so we'll probably have to align that one in a year and a half to go with some other ones because everybody at least gets two years on it. Okay. This particular board is unique. We don't have anything written down as a lot of our other boards are spelled out with what they do, what their terms are. This board has no information on it whatsoever. Well, Patrick threw away her 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Gotcha. So there's still one more opening on this board? No, it's full. Is it full? Mm -hmm. Okay. Five. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, based on what Mr. Bridge just said, that there's no, no guidelines. Should council or Mr. Bridge come up with some guidelines for this board? Since all the other boards have guidelines, that kind of makes sense to me. I mean, I don't know. Were there guidelines as far as how long the terms are for? Well, um, and this one doesn't have anything that says specifically what it does. Maybe so, we have something for that. Well, that's a policy thing, so some council is going to have to write that up and send it off to one that. So, however you guys want to handle that, I, my suggestion is maybe copy and paste or look at other cities and see what they got. Generally, a Parks and Rec board is, we're having an Easter egg hunt, come help us do it. Anything that's parks related, I would love to get them on board, which I plan to do. And hey, these are some of the playground equipment that I would like to purchase. What's your opinion on it? Yeah. Um, just help guide anything that has to do with our parks or anything recreation based. Um, I would gladly to help with assist with that. I just need some guidance on what exactly council wants them to do. Okay. Mr. Oh, Lindsay. Follow up question. Uh, since we're talking about parks and recreation, uh, a few months ago, we, you and I spoke with Mr. Bridge about basketball hoop nets. Mm -hmm. Have they been obtained and put up? Uh, last time I looked, there wasn't there. No, they're not. We're going to have to tear the ones that are there down. The ones in the nets. The ones in uh, behind Scott Street in Carlisle Park. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those. That one's got to come down. I went out and inspected it, and there's too much uh, aftermarket rebar and fabrication on that unit. So we're going to put two ones, two new ones up, like it's in Smith Park. The single post of hoop. Yeah. So now we're researching okay. good notes because the ones we got on Smith Park, we got those at no charge also. Is there a timeline on that? Um, I don't have a specific timeline right now, but we're, we're moving as quick as we can. Six weeks, maybe? Uh, we, will, we will see what we got coming, and we will inform you when we can best get that fixed for the city. Okay. Sure. Thanks, sir. Mr. Reynolds. Uh, just quick looking, 1999. There's nothing on the ballot outside of uh, city council elections. Wow. So it's that probably going to be 1997. Thank you. We'll change that to 1997. I think it's uh, far back. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Thank you, sir. Officer. I'm just scrolling through. I see that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for saving me a couple hours for looking through night. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Moving on, Mr. Bridge. Oh, yeah. Um, and moving on with the city manager report. Central cashier job openings. Um, we put this on Facebook, and I want to say it was viewed by almost over 10,000 people. So we got a great response to our central job uh, posting. I am happy to report most of our applications did come from the New Carlisle city limits or the postal zip code, um, but we did get some outside of that of our area as well. Um, total, we got 60, 60 applications. However, I just got two today, so we got 62 applications. We did select the top eight for interviews. The interviews will be going on tomorrow. Um, we're having a set of two interviews. First round is tomorrow. We're going to narrow that down down to three. And then um, starting Monday and next week, we're going to have them come back with their final interview with myself. Uh, very excited to get that position filled. Again, great, great applicants to go through all of them and, and select the top eight was a very daunting task. Anyone who does that for a living knows Knows what kind of skill, or what kind of battle you're up against. Um, but as soon as we figure out who that person will, will be, and we offer that position to, we'll definitely uh, let council and the rest of the city residents know who your new central cashier will be. And our central cashier is that first person that you see walking into the city building where you go pay your water bill. So very important position. It's the first person they see walking into the city. Um, so if anyone's wondering, Victoria, our old central cashier, is moving up to accounts payable. So therefore, it opened up her position. Uh, community cleanup is set for uh, this Saturday, June 10th. If you do have a council packet, I will show you what's in it. If not, we do have some information on our Facebook page. And we have some flyers over there that Mr. Kitko brought, but it looks like this. So our annual community cleanup is scheduled for June 10th. Um, it will be at the old former Westlake Elementary at 621 Walsh Drive. There are some information in here about what you can and can't do, and maybe if there's a charge for a certain item that you do bring. So definitely take a 
take a look at this flyer or access our city Facebook page and look at that flyer before you come on Saturday. Great event. Uh, we look forward to uh, getting a bunch of stuff out of town that we don't need anymore. Okay, I lost my spot. There with me. And I think the last thing on there was the community garage sale, which is set scheduled for June 24th. And we have a rain out date of July 1st with that. And we will have uh, two ads being ran in the Dayton Daily News and the Springfield News Sun. Uh, there's little blurbs on there that says when the garage sale is, that the whole city is involved. Um, some feedback that we got last year, people did not want to register. They did not want to go through that. What they, the feedback we got was some people registered and then the people who came in the town uh, had, a, uh, had a map essentially that we had made. Um, so they didn't know where to go, where not to go. Ooh, people just wanted it to be very easy on the citizen end. So we just said this year, this is the day it is. It's all day, set up, go for as long as you need to. Um, we're not gonna end it at five. And the paper last year said eight to five. If you wanna go to six or seven, that's your call, it's your, it's your, it's your yard. So we, we wanna be vague, but yet effective with this particular one. So we'll see how this goes. Um, if we don't get enough turnout, we'll go back to registering and then having that big list. But I think this year is gonna make it a lot more easier for someone to set up and not have to worry about calling the city, say this is my address. Okay, uh, again, June 24th for the rain out date, July 1st. Um, the garage sale's gotten bigger every year we've done it. This is a great time for citizens uh, to uh, make some extra money. We get a lot of people coming from outside of New Carlisle into New Carlisle for the very first time. Historically, uh, I know Student Bakers has a very good day. Some of the businesses downtown hopefully have a good day with this as well. And it's also the opening day of our farmer's market as well. So it's gonna be a very awesome Saturday to come downtown and check things out and then walk around town to visit the local garage show uh, sales going on. I do believe that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Council, Mr. Lawrence, Mr. Mr. Lauer. Um, thank you. Any information on the homeowners association if the letter was sent in to do away with it or not? <clears throat> that is still in between our attorneys. I have not heard anything since we had took those ordinances off. Well, what I'm saying the gentleman has sent it in because before he didn't send it in, had not sent it in. The letter to us? No, the letter to the state. I don't know if he sent the letter to the state. Well, that's what held it up. Yeah. So, I, like I said, the, his attorney and our attorney are doing their thing. Okay. Okay. But I haven't heard anything since we okay. pulled the legislation. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Lauer. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Bridge, I have a question on the advertising for the garage sale. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why we're not doing putting it in our local paper? Um, we can. We have plenty of time to do so. I, I think that would be a wise thing because there's a lot of people that don't take big days in the Springfield Sun. I myself is one of them. I'm sure there's others. Uh, I just think using our local resources and things that's available to us, we should look at them first before we go outside the city. I agree with you, too. Can. I mean, you know, if it's possible to do sure. No, we can. We still have plenty of time to do it. Uh, my logic with that is, and no disrespect to our paper, I use them every single time, but the people who read that paper know, it, hopefully know it's already there. Um, we have always sent out the New Sun and the Dayton Daily News that reaches a much larger audience, and the goal is to get as much people into this town as we can. Right. Um, I, the reason I said it was in the Springfield <coughs> New Sun and Dayton Daily News is because that's where I just did the ad today. We still have ample time, and I did have every intention to contact Dale to put an ad in the local paper as well. Yeah, I sure. appreciate it. Thank no you. problem. <clears throat> Mr. Kraybacher. Okay, we're talking about basketball nets. Um, now I've noticed the tennis courts only got, there's only one full tennis court. There's nets gone on the other two. Right, we're working on getting two, uh, one of our posts broke that has the wheel that holds the cable that goes across. We're working on getting those uh, fixed currently. They're cast, so we have to get some new poles. Right. Any thoughts about making a pickleball court? Uh, I have not. We have no, we have not had like large interest um, into repaying a court. What are you looking for? The fastest growing sport in the, in the country. What is it? Is it the YMCA? The YMCA? Yeah. City's um, this is probably a loaded question, big question, but what's the city's policy on signage? Depends on what kind of signage you want. It is a loaded question. A broadband, big signs, little signs. Um, sign code, um, and that's a loaded question. I don't mean it. Sign codes, the 
it's very confusing to begin with. I mean, if you have to deal with sign codes, it's the worst thing ever. What kind of sign do you want? We have we have wall signs, which basically sit flat against the wall. You got projection signs that come off to the side. Right. You got ground signs. But with any with any sign put in within city limits, should have a permit. Let me ask you this, because I fielded some questions about signs that were on particular buildings downtown. Are these ones that have to deal with parking spaces? Yes, and it's okay. not. And, and, and let me t and let me tell you why I'm asking. I'm not, not because of what's on the sign. There is one business that I know in particular. I'll just say it. Domino's does not know who put that sign directly in front of his business. Sure. And that's. Yeah. All signs, no matter what type it is, you, there is a permit process for that. There are very few signs on the city that are permitted mm -hmm. without any kind of permit. Usually, those are garage sale signs. Uh, you got your houses up, or it's political signs. Yeah. Um, when it comes to those type of signs that we saw, those the city we would consider those temporary signs. Um, they're not a workmanlike manner. Uh, they're basically lettering on vinyl. That's what it is, stuck to a wall. So it doesn't have a nice border around. It's not made out of wood, and that's what I mean by non workmanlike manner. Those signs are considered temporary signs, so they should be thirty five dollars for thirty days. I think it's 30 days or 50 days. There's a charge and then X amount of days and you can have it because it is a temporary sign. Anytime that you put a sign anywhere, you need to have the property owner's permission. You know, so specifically speaking to the domino sign, a lot of people think that that split right there is a great place to put signs and Domino's is nine times out of 10 just does not care. We did get a few calls in the city that he did not know who put that sign up. So in the future, if we put a sign on somebody's personal property, we need to make sure that one, there's a permit in place, and then two, you have permission from the guy who owns the parcel. So we didn't do anything to this particular set of sign because given the nature of what was on them, um, I feel as though they should be able to get the word out, but just moving forward, those signs will definitely have to have, it, have some sort of permitting behind them. Thank you, sir. Mr. Reynolds. Follow up with that. Uh, actually, I'm a stickler about signage because it got me in trouble a few years back. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, however, political signs are guaranteed by the Ohio Supreme Court as political free speech and cannot be limited. Now, obviously, you can limit them if someone sticks one in your yard. If someone sticks Ethan in the sign. The size. There's a size. There's a size. There's a size. There's a size. With certain sizes, yeah. Well, the ones that were the small ones that are at Domino's, it's not a banner. No, it's just it's a small sign. No, no, obviously, no, no. This one's a big sign. Oh, it's like a four by four. Oh yeah, it's got the, the lettering you stick on. And it wheels it's a big it out. Yellow one. Oh, it has the air. Well, I have on that side. Yeah. He did. When I leave town, I go on five seventy one. So. No, you're right with political signs. We we can't say there are free speech. We can we can regulate if they're in a residential district. They got to be kind of like I think three. Do they have to be below certain height size? But if you're in like a business district, then they can get a little a little bigger. Yeah. Now, I don't know. I don't know about the yellow sign in particular. Sign that you will love. I don't know who put that yeah. there. I don't know anything about that, but I know like the white signs. Yeah. Uh, right, free speech. I would tread lightly because Akron versus uh, Mandeview, I think it was, is where they removed signs for a similar issue. It wasn't parking, but it was an income tax levy. Mm -hmm. And they got stuck in a pro income tax levy at the city building. So someone said, hey, I'm going to stick my anti tax sign there. And the city removed it. And then the Supreme Court said, I'm sorry, you owe that man $10,000 now because it is public. If you put it there, it's now public. Someone can stick Ethan Reynolds as a jerk in their yard if they want to. Hmm. If you want to, go ahead. I don't care. Uh, but they can stick it there for 20 years if they want to. It's free speech. Bill, get that signed up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but no, I, I, like I said, I wasn't at all concerned with the small ones. It was the big one that sure. the business owner said he had no idea who put it there. So I just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> so, Mr. Lindsay. If, if the business owner owns whatever it is there and somebody put a sign there and he don't want it there, he's within his legal right to remove that sign and dispose of it. Yeah, but he's being nice. He's right. Chris well, is, I understand. Chris I mean, right. this, the, the guy at Domino's gives us lots of leeway with his property. But still, if he don't want it there, he has the legal right sure. to remove it. And, and the follow-up question to Mr. Bridge on, on the signs. So when the post office put the signs out, the yard signs for hunger or something or the other, they need a permit to do that? No. Temporary. Because it's temporary? Or? No, she does that every year. Uh, that was, that's been going on well before I was city manager. Um, you're technically not supposed to have signs in right of ways. You're not. Right. right. Okay. I just wanted to follow up on that. Exactly. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Council, any other questions for the city manager? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Appreciate it. All right. Moving on to comments from members of the public. If anyone has any questions or comments, we'd ask you to go to the podium, give us your name and address so the clerk of council can get that on records and try to keep your comments and questions to five minutes so we can give everybody time to say what they would like to say. Next out. Oh. Oh. Oh, we got one up there already. My name is Beverly Conley and I live at 326 Drake Avenue. I just have a quick question. I would like to know why the trash can size is based on my age. I can't get the small one, which is what I need, because I'm not 65. Okay. Why? Why is that? You can get. I don't need the next size up. Why can't you get the small one? It's, would you like me to? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. You, you, it's that, that small container is based off. It's for senior citizen low volume use. It's, and I'm low volume as you get. Uh, I'm as low volume as you can get. I'm by myself. And I still can't get it, and I know the lady across the street who's five years younger than me and is raising her two grandkids has the small one. Well, I don't know how she got the small one. Well, I don't either, but, and plus it's costing me more money every month. I just don't understand why it went by age instead of need. It's, it, when we did it, we worked out the contract, it was low volume. The uh, smaller container in the middle is the low volume Correct. for people who are not on the standard level of service. So um, the logic with the 65 or plus is a lot of cities have these in place. It's, we're not the first one to do it. Uh, city, of, city of Kettering has one in place, and that's actually where I got the idea for ours. Uh, but it just goes down to the stipulation that you're 65 and probably don't produce a lot of trash. We knew, I knew at some point in time, if somebody's 60, 61, or 62, there's always going to be that outlier who doesn't take advantage of it. We do apologize about that. Um, our trash rates are still pretty aggressively priced fairly. Um, so I don't know how your neighbor got that other one. Well, I know two I of them. Talk to that about that. All I can say is, you know, there is an age limit for that small one. So there's nothing I can do if I, I mean, I don't need one that holds three 30 gallon bags. Do you have what size? Count? I have the next size up. Do you have a 64 gallon? Yeah, they wouldn't give me the small one because I wasn't old enough. The only time I wished I was older. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, do you put your yard waste in with it? I'm sorry? You can add yard waste in with that this year, so you don't have to have a separate container for that. Um, but unfortunately, I'm in 65 or over for the small one. Thank you. That's all I need. Mr. Leth, don't forget you have a mic in front of you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he didn't say that. He was, oh, I thought he was thinking that. <laughs> Sir. Okay. My name is Alvin Putterball. I own a custom framing shop down on Main Street Carousel Gallery, 125 South Main Street, New Carlisle, Ohio, 45344. Okay. Anyway, I'm here to let you know uh, uh, my feelings on, on the eliminating our parking downtown. Um, first of all, let me say I support the replacing of the lights because I think anything we do for the town is a good thing. And I mean, you know, that's an upgrade. But I do want to eliminate our parking downtown because what little parking we have downtown is what keeps our downtown businesses alive because the people that come like parking on the street and if you're an elderly person or it's inclement weather, you don't want them parking around back and having to walk you know, clear around the block. We have one crosswalk on the whole main street that's at that intersection. So if we were to go like to Trisha's place, they would have to technically walk all the way around to that corner, use that crosswalk and then walk all the way back down to the other end of the block because they can't park on the street. So I'm just here to say that I'm opposing the parking elimination um, no matter what. I mean, we don't really need a turn lane. It's been that way forever. And the, and the, the minimal amount of, of uh, traffic congestion it causes only lasts for maybe an hour, hour and a half in the evening times when, when people are coming home or in the mornings when they're going to work. Um, we don't have, 
you know, uh, a need for it throughout the entire day. So I'm just here to say I don't think we need to eliminate the parking, uh, but I do support you guys on the uh, traffic lights. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Anyone else? Questions or comments? Ma'am? My name's Anna Coffey. I live at 201 Deerfield Drive, New Carlisle, Ohio, 45344. Uh, I have some questions. Okay, on the, the building next to the sewer treatment plant, do you still own that? Does the city still own it? I'm not sure. The doctor's office building. What, the doctor's the office? Uh, no, we don't own that. Is the sewer plant or the water plant, ma'am? So the up on Main Street. Oh, that's the water facility. Treatment okay. Facility. That Do you one? own that? Oh, the old city yeah. building. The old city building. No. House, no, house come, they sold that. Yeah. We sold there that was one. plenty of room there for city offices because you had a basement. There was plenty of parking. You're over here now paying in excess of $21,000 a year when you could have taken that and stayed there and built onto that and investing that $21,000 a year. I've lived in this town for 55 years. I have seen nothing that's been done to this town. This, uh, the water tower down there, we voted income tax in and paid for that. We were told when that was paid for, it would go away. Of course it never did because you got the money and once you get the money, that's it. So what are you, where are you gonna go next because they're gonna raise your rent down here. Well, at this time, and we're looking at a couple options, but nothing is set in concrete or solid yet. There's, I mean, the fact of, of just finding a place, like you'd said, that, that'll meet the needs, that'll give our administration side a, enough room to do their job. Now, with, with the old city building, I, I don't think I've been in that building one time. That was way before my time, so I, unfortunately, I can't speak on why or what the purpose was behind selling that building and getting rid of it. Uh, well, there's not a person on council right now that was on council when that building was sold. That's a problem in this when town. Nobody that. knows what this hand is doing or that hand is doing. Another thing, okay, there was a street uh, speed limit sign stolen on Deerfield. as in front of 200. I called the city. I talked to the city manager. He said he would talk to the street department and put it back up. We have we never had small children there. Now there's plenty of children. There's two bus stops there. I know he told me he didn't talk to me, but he did. I called the second time and I talked to him again. I was given a snide remark that there's no sense putting the sign up because nobody pays attention to him anyway. Uh, we put the sign up, so I don't know what you're talking about. Say it again, I'm sorry. The sign was put up. Is the sign gone again? Because we did put it back There up. was no sign put up. I, I live right there on the corner and I watch. Okay, well, we did put the sign back up. So is the sign missing again? Because that means someone stole it again. So we there just has not it. been one there. It wasn't put up after I talked correct. to you. Yeah. The sign was put up. So is the sign missing? Because we need to. We can argue about that. Okay, so just the sign is no longer there. No, right? it is not there. So and there should be a, a sign put up that there are school bus stops there. There's one down at the end of Deer, uh, Deerfield, and there's one at the corner of Zimmerman and Deerfield. Okay. There are plenty of kids on there that didn't used to be there. People fly up that street. You can sit there and laugh all you want. People fly up and down that street. And I've lived here all these years. I've never seen anything done to that street. And I own property on that street for about 50 years. Now, why hasn't it been paved? Well, do you, know, do you know how the street levy fund works that, that was passed a few years ago, ma'am? I don't know how the street levy works, but I'll tell you one thing. Okay. This town, you've got, seem to have money for all everything else. We're paving five streets, maybe it was a six, six streets this year coming up. Okay, Very, is Deerfield or any of those over there no, in it? No, no. Or are they no, all on but they've, got to, they've got to go as far as priority is to damage. And, okay, and wear I, and I lived on, on, Deerf on Drake for 45 years. Mm -hmm. they, they had money there to put in those, those storm sewers. They sat on that for years. They had $80,000. Nothing was done until I, there was kids out there when that street would flood, would lay down under that water. 
and I called the, uh, the health department on them. That's when they finally did something about it. Okay. 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 So, so you say you go according to what's the worst? Okay. What about uh, Deerfield there where there's plenty of traffic back and forth there's and in 45 years nothing's been done? There's a handful of streets in this town that are bad. We all know that. No one, no one's hiding behind that. But you know, we've got to look at where we get our grant money from and, and prioritize where that money goes. The street levy fund that was passed, I think, three or four, maybe five years ago, generates. A lot of people misunderstood how that that levy was to work. That money was was passed to generate seed money for grants, and it's working. That levy generates anywhere between 110, 125 thousand dollars a year, which is not a lot of money to do an entire street. But with that levy. Mr. Kitko and Mr. Bridge have worked hard to get that money to work for us to get streets done. We were finishing up Prentice, which was one of the worst streets in the town. Um, we're going to have Applewood, Pepperwood, uh, Willowick, and Spinning. Spinning is, is off. Ask him. He lives And those were all newer streets. They, used to, they were built after this over here was. It, regardless, there, you know. There, there's Chuck Holes. You go up Deerfield and you get the stop sign and you go to the right. There's chuck holes you could bury yourself in there with. I'm not, I'm not going to dispute that. I'm sure there probably is. So make sure if, if there are actual holes in there, report where they're at in front of which addresses. Call the city building and let them know so they can get them repaid. But as far as saying the city has not done any street repairs, major repairs is completely false. I'd say in the past three years, we've done more street repaving than we've done in the past 10. I've watched it over there. I've seen nothing here other than the street that was done not long ago. So with Another that being thing. said, we're going to move on. Okay. How, how many people live in New Carlisle now? What's the total people here? Is there 6,000 around 5,800, 5,900, give or take. Okay. 5, we used to be a village. This place was much, much better when it was a village. We had our own police department. We had volunteer fire department. Anytime. But I tell you what, if I could, I'd get out of this town. But I can't because I have a health problem now. But I, there's another thing. I, this is nothing against you guys. How, how much does it cost out of the budget for them to drive the, the cars to Springfield or wherever they live? Regardless of what that cost is, and we're going to move on because we're well past five minutes. I know there's people here who want to speak. That's you, what I figured. No, no. Well, let me tell that's you. That's exactly what I figured would happen. I'll be more than happy to get the budget for you so you can see the cost savings that it is to contract the Clark County Sheriff's Department versus having our own police department. We had a good one. In, times have changed. And we, Bill Manor, you should have taken that building. No, no. Uh -oh. You, you hold expect hold on, hold on. people to give you things that's spotless. Okay. Just like this place needed a roof. You don't do things and take care of things periodically. You just wait until it falls apart. And that's what's happening to this town. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Anyone else? Nancy Lubranovich, 505 Pease Drive. Hindsight being wonderful, we might have bought, bought uh, what Trussell's was and made it a parking lot. There's also that other station uh, that Speedway isn't using anymore. It's sitting empty. We could tear it down. If possible, could we possibly tear down some of Family Dollar and make it rather than sitting there empty? Well, unfortunately, Nancy, we can't tear down property that's not ours. Well, I mean, you know, I don't know if they're selling anything, but right. you just never know until you ask. Yeah. yeah. Fair question. I just, I don't think anyone's looking to sell their building to have it tore down. Okay. Also, uh, a lot of the towns, when they're going to have the community sales, they put a fairly decent sized sign on the way into town. So like, you know, maybe if you put up four different signs, that would help a lot of the people want to do it. 
do they utilize the uh, the new Kalisle signs, the ones that they kind of use for everything, the festival and the bands at the park? Do they use that? This is not our sign. It's just not for the rest. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think there's a church one out there too, with all the churches now. Jefferson Street, and I also own the building at 100 East Jefferson Street, which is known as the Dillinger Bank. I would like to go on record that I oppose the uh, removal of the parking spaces. However, I do support the uh, new lights. Uh, not only would the proposal eliminate the parking for my building, but it would also eliminate it for my home. Thank you. Hang on, just a minute. Mr. Lowry. Sal. So. This is Retiro. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Are you still on the planning board? Uh, Are you still on the planning board? As far as I know. Okay. Do you remember? Okay, I'm going to ask you if you remember something, okay? Could you go back to the podium for just a minute, please? Thank you. I was told something by someone last week who should know what they're talking about, and I know would not lie to me, that when Rite Aid was built, they put the parking lot in, that there was an agreement between them, the planning board was there, and the city, that the public could park in that parking lot. I'm asking you if you know anything about it. No, I was not on the planning board at that time. You was not? Okay. I was not. Thank you. Mr. Lowry. Uh, I'm already looking into that for documentation. Oh, you are? Okay. Yeah, uh, the neighbor to them had uh, mentioned that they are allowed three spots from their Jefferson Street address to park their personal vehicles there. Then that also we had it. But I'm trying to find that legal document and land access and stuff, but I still okay. haven't found it. But I've heard the same thing. Okay. Thank that. you much. You know, that would be a... Go ahead. Oh, I can't tell you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, hey, I'm Mr. Fogelman. Mr. Reynolds has something? Do we happen to have that same agreement with CVS? Uh, there, I know there's nothing with CBS okay. for that that I know of. Uh, I don't know if there's anything. Hold on. I think it was mentioned in the planning board. Where's Sally at? I'm going to put you on the spot again. When we did the CBS, the new one, was it the BZA or the planning board that well, there was discussion about the public parking in that spot? It was not at the planning board. It was not at the planning board. I'll look at the BZA. Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering. Thank you both. I appreciate it. Because even when it was the BZA, you're right. Because they were talk, we were talking about the, the ground sign they have because they had to get variance for that and what can be put on that. They would say they would do community events and stuff like that. It was it was board of zoning appeals. Thank you. Okay. I'm, I'm Mr. Powell. I, I was just going to say that if the case is true that there is private parking and there's other lots, they would need to have 
have some sort of signage to let people know. Absolutely. Just familiar with you. Yep. And once again, I'm not saying there is, but I can tell you I was told that, and the person that told me that I would think would know, but I'm not the one saying absolutely sure. But, you know, it's worth looking into. Thank you, Mr. Lauer. Mr. Lindsay, did you have something? Yeah, good, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else in the. Ma'am? Brandy, we'll get you next. I didn't see you, Brandy. Linda. Good evening. I'm Linda Campbell, president of the New Carolina Area Chamber of Commerce. Rumored to be dead, but not dead. Uh, I'm here to protest uh, the taking of our parking downtown. People do not walk from the Church Street parking lot or Rite Aid or the Methodist Church or wherever. They like convenience. If they aren't buying stuff online and you don't give them a curbside parking spot, they're not going to frequent your business. Mm -hmm. And frankly, as a business owner, you don't want people speeding through town as fast as they can go. You want them to stop and look at your shops. And I know back when uh, Lowell was still on council, he a lot of times would refer to Tip City as a, a, a good example. And if any of you have driven through there, you're not going to see yellow lines all the way up five blocks of the downtown. They are business friendly. There is no big, ginormous turn lanes. They did put in some new lighting, I believe, but if this lighting means that we're going to lose parking like it did seven or eight years ago when we asked for crosswalks for the safety of the downtown and the people that come across the street. At that time, it was safer to walk in the middle of the block than it was to go by the lights because of people turning right on red and, and left from the east on Jefferson to Maine. The other thing is, um, <clears throat> back to what was asked about the, the Rite Aid parking lot. I was at that meeting, so was my husband, uh, several of the other business owners, and I asked the question, since you have such a big lot, if we don't park along the, court, the outside perimeter of your building, do you mind if some of us park over here? Because the business people shouldn't be on the street. They should be so customers can stop. And it was a verbal yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know of anything ever put in the ink about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I could ask probably the owner, but I didn't think it would come to that because if you guys take all of our parking just so that you can expedite the egress out of town, we might as well shut the place down. And while most of us aren't making bazillions of dollars in town, you're going to lose your tax base. We're going to lose what value we have if there's no place to put cars. So I would suggest that we forget the whole thing. And if you're not going to be listening to the businesses or ask us what we want, how are you representing all the people? This was uh, an arbitrary decision as far as I know. And uh, I'm against it. The chamber is financially supporting it and physically and vocally supporting it. And I would suggest that you think about it. Okay. Linda, I really think that, um, and I appreciate your comments tonight. I really think that this whole thing has gotten blown completely, I mean, completely out of proportion. And I appreciate the advertising you guys have done, all the signs, the, the small signs going down the street. At the last council meeting, I don't know if you'd watch it on YouTube, I don't think he was here, but you know, there wasn't a council member up here that said they wanted to take anybody's parking, not a one. Uh, I, I personally am not for that, and I, I've talked to a couple other, I'm not gonna speak for everyone up here, but I, I can't imagine it even, I can't imagine it even passing, uh, to be honest. I mean, because I personally agree with everything you just said. Uh, now, I do agree, I think that, that that intersection has some issues at those peak hours in the, in the day when everyone's getting off work, and I had a friend of mine shoot me a message so just said something about Medway has, and I'm not sure which intersection or where it's at exactly. I thought he said Medway, but there's only really one lane. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I thought he said Medway, but he said it, that it, there's in Medway there's a single lane and it has a green light and a green arrow. And what happens is, is it turns all the other three red. 
And so that one lane can still go straight or left or right. That's easy. Okay. Why the other three are stopped, which I thought was an interesting idea. I mean, right. I'm not an ODOT, you know, engineer by any means, but I thought that was an interesting idea. So, um, you know, well, when I'm you glad to hear that you're, you know, not against our parking, but when you go out and grab money from the government, there's always a hook. Mm -hmm. I don't think you did your due diligence to find out what the ramifications would be when you accept. Well, somebody, somebody had started, hold on, someone started saying that, that in order for us to get these lights, we had to, you know, to get the, the full grant to pay for these lights, the lights that are going to go in at Maine and Lake and uh, 571 in Maine. In order to get the grant to cover that, the, the, the hook was that we had to agree to some sort of a turn line. That's not true. There's there's no truth to that. So if these lanes don't go in and your parking spaces stay where they are, we still get the lights, regardless of what we do with the turn line. Well, how many spaces are we going to lose if we get the lights because none, that's what none, happened none, when, none, none, none. are you sure of that yes yeah because it's not changing anything well, well the reason i ask is because when we got the crosswalks yeah. we got yellow lines from the corner of <laughs> east jefferson up towards where uh or dietrich has his gold silver coin shop there was two or three taken there there was a one or two taken on our side on on uh, South Main. They are just around the corner from Jefferson. And the waterbed shop on that corner, I think they lost one, maybe one and a half. And I, is it really necessary to have all this yellow curb? I mean, I don't, I don't understand it. Uh, that I would assume is an ODOT. Uh, typically, um, the, the street lights come with no, there's no, um, th they're going to go in, whether there's a turn lane or not, period. The lights are done. You've already received an email from ODOT confirming that, that uh, bit when you, uh, Trish Bishop had sent you an email and I got carbon copied into it that said that the light project is a done deal. The turn lane is a proposal to look at congestion and the pedestrian safety proposal all is about is what does the public think about this okay that's it as far as the yellow curbing you're required to have at least 25 feet off the radius of painted yellow curb on each corner okay Why? that's an ODOT standard uniform code of uh, traffic control devices it's required it's not my role it's just required. because of two state highways no 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 um, almost all we do all our inner city that's part city by the uniform code of traffic control devices okay why doesn't tip city have all that yellow paint they have yellow paint on every corner no, like, they, no three foot no three foot by alleys um, on the only side. place they have yellow markings is by the fire hydrants mm -hmm. but you can't. go take a look it is it is illegal to park on a curb within 20 feet of a corner yeah, well and they're illegal aren't they <laughs> now, what, there, there is a huge we could go all day with the triangulation of line of sight okay the one thing that could be an issue and this is regardless if we do the lights and this could come at the repaving regardless is currently where the stop bars are the one in front of the waterbed store the one that's in front of Rite Aid and so forth they currently do not meet semi truck turning they do not so what we've had some loads do is they've had to back up back in that corner they may have to adjust the stop bar with no turn we, these are probably coming anyway, regardless of the, the new traffic lights. Um, they're having issues with oversized loads, and they're having issues with truck turning. Regardless of I like it or not, ODOT is saying that we have a small issue there. So no turn lanes, street lights. They may have to adjust the bar based on the turning of the um, And we're going to lose semis. parking. So we're we'll losing more parking. There, there could potentially be one that, that uh, could be done. But it has nothing to do with what the city wants, what what everyone thinks, unless you, you fight the traffic devices. That's all I'm saying is I, I'm not always for the businesses, and I have to keep the things in general because it's a federal project. I have to follow the federal guidelines and not give preferential treatment. I have to go on fully public opinion. So you didn't know that going out and asking for federal funds was going to potentially knife us in the back. The federal funds have nothing to do with any of the parking spaces. Nothing. I mean, well, right now we... What we brought can, this whole thing on? Whose idea? Hold on. Hold on. We'll, we'll, answer, we'll answer that at the public oh, meeting. Mr. Mr. Do you still have yeah, I have. Mr. Rounds. Wait, then we're going to wrap this up. Bye. Sorry. Quick question. What year do you remember when we... Uh, when you read that meeting for CBS, do you have like a time frame? So we can no, right it. We write it? Right it. it was before they tore Tatone and what they called the Tatone building down. Okay. So, and that would have been prior to that.
the day. I'm just trying to see if we can find that possibly. Within the last 20 years. Okay, this Campbell. Was That's that, all I wanted to know. Was that a planning board or board of the appeals meeting? Do you know? It was just a public meeting. And I was a general think, public hearing. I think uh, I think Bernadette Unger was there. Yeah. Maybe Poncho in the meeting. Okay. I think. I'll, know if we have it. I'll look at. It. But it's probably been 1995, six, seven.
Department. Absolutely wrong, and they're lying. I don't care who they are, they're lying. Plain and simple. Thank you, sir. We're going to, Ms. Mullet was next. My name is Brandy Mullet. I live at 522 Hamilton Avenue. Um, I'd like to start by thanking council for appointing me to the Parks and Recreation Board. I'm looking forward to that opportunity. Um, and I totally didn't want to get involved in the whole Pandora's box that is the downtown parking thing, but I would just like to remind everybody that the city of New Carlisle administration and council does not control everything like everyone thinks they do. There are powers that be that far supersede what the city can control. And if ODOT is coming in and saying, hey, you've got a problem here, this intersection is not up to code, all due respect, you said, is anyone suing you? We shouldn't wait for a lawsuit to fix a problem. That's fishing with dynamite. Um, no, I don't, but just as I don't also see how that's relevant because, um, anyway, um, Mr. Bridge, I would appreciate, Becky and I both would appreciate, um, any guidance we can have whatsoever as far as the Parks and Rec Board goes. Um, we have some great ideas, um, some projects that we want to get started on and we just need a little direction on how to go about doing it. Um, two of the big projects that we want to focus on in, in the very near future are right here at Smith Park and that is cleaning up the tennis courts. There's a lot of, um, twigs and tree limbs and debris, leaves stuck in the fence. We want to work on kind of getting that cleaned up. And the other thing that we were looking to do is, um, thanks to some very generous donations to our um, fundraising, um, we're looking to replace some of the sand for the volleyball court because it's beyond sad at this point. Um, and to toot Becky and I's own horn a little bit, I just would like to point out, everyone, if you when you leave here tonight, when you drive by the uh, corner here at... Smith and Washington, yep. is it? Yep. Um, we did repaint the uh, plant, the cement planter up there and put some nice, pretty new flowers in there, kind of spruce that up a little bit. Um, in the coming weeks, we are going to be working on getting this Smith Park lettering stenciled back on there so we can kind of tie that in. We wanted to kind of make it match the sign that um, Lowell had so generously funded the replacement of at the other end. So um, just a little bit of positivity, trying to ease some tensions here. Thank you. Brandy, Mr. Reynolds has a question, comment. This goes to Mrs. Whitey and Ms. McKenzie. Did Ms. Whitey help on this project with painting? I'm not Thank sure. you. No? Okay. Well, okay, okay, okay. I wasn't too sure who, I didn't know if it was all three of you or what the deal was. Uh, so definitely I want to thank both of you guys for doing that. Uh, serve as admins on that so we can kind of control um, what goes on there and um, I already lost my train of thought on what my second thing was. I think we had a couple comments for you too while you're thinking for your comment. Okay. I wanted to piggyback on what Mr. Reynolds says. Thank you for the work that you did at the park. It was great. And, uh, and as I re was reading through the, the uh, applications, a couple things really turned me on about some the food truck, truck rally. I think it would be a cool thing. I, we do things too. like that to reduce
you guys have already accomplished so much. Whatever you see needs to get done, just go ahead and do it. You know, well, you and help. that's kind of the premise that we were operating under, but you mentioned that there are two existing members of the board that are right. still, um, so we need to know who those people are, and we need to get together and communicate and start. Um, but like I, I mean, I put, that was my other thing. When I posted, um, we posted some photos of the, the flower box and what we did. That took, she and I, about three hours and 50 bucks. Now, I did get the flowers from free for, for many of you, but um, grand total still would have been less than $100, even if we had paid for everything. And it's just a matter of we have a lot of talkers and not a lot of doers. And I think if people have the guidance of a Parks and Rec board to, to organize events and say, hey, this is what we're doing, we need help, we can channel that energy into something more positive and create, you know, bring back the stuff that everybody says that we are either don't have anymore in New Carlisle or haven't had to begin with. Mr. Owen. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> You're going to get them all. I, I too, uh, Becky, when I can commend you and uh, uh, Brandy. Brandy, sorry. That's Brandy Becky. <laughs> The uh, red paint, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Kiko should have uh, half a gallon at least or more of it that I gave him last year. Uh, maybe you've already gotten it. I don't know. Do you not have that, sir? We probably have it out the hut. I don't remember what they did with it. <laughs> well, hopefully it isn't frozen. Where is that? And, uh, they they, uh, they can put that paint to use. Uh, that was kind of the color theme that we picked off of what uh, Mr. McLaughlin had done for uh, a sign that shelters in two of the other parks that, that uh, we painted. So I commend both of you, actually all three of you, for stepping up and getting on this board. And hopefully the five of you, I believe it's five ladies now? No. Uh, no, I think no. there's one gentleman. I one feel gentleman. sorry for him. <laughs> I think we will be working on some type of language to for this board since it has no guidance in it. Uh, might be two or three weeks, but something will be coming. Again, thank you both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Craybocker. Well, one of the persons is my wife. So, Becky, you know where to find her. Okay, so no problem. And uh, the other one, I don't know if Jim wants me to mention his name or not. Is it Jim Murphy, the other one? Um, sounds familiar, yeah. Okay, Jim Murphy is the other one. Yeah. Okay. So, James. James Murphy. Well, I wouldn't say that for 100% certain. I just said it sounded familiar. Yeah, well, <laughs> before he was the only guy on the, on the board, too. So, But anyway, they're, they're, they were their they're, they're original park and rec. And she just threw away all of her material, you know, uh. just the other day. So, you know, before she talked to Brandy. Um, Randy, and I'm glad it's getting back together because you know they can, do, they do. You guys are going to do a lot. You know, and there's a lot to do because it's been put onto the back burner. When the budget was cut, and that was one place it was cut, and that's where it happened to the board. It just split up. So, so you guys, are, you know, having young youth, I'm saying youth. You know, I'm sorry. You are correct. That's how I see it. Thank you, Mr. Craybocker. Randy, same Thank thing. You. Both of you, congratulations. Good job. Thanks for everything you guys have done. Thank you. It did come out, there was a little additional cost. It was $50, and I was the only one that got eaten up by Jiggers. And moving forward, actually, get with me because you guys don't have to use your own money for stuff like that. Oh, we didn't. No, we used some of the Oh, okay. <laughs> got you. And then the for the 18 budget, we'll get with council about putting a little pot of money in there that, that you guys can work with throughout the year. Easter egg hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Here now.
ago. The best part I saw was downtown, which to me starts at Jefferson and goes up from there. When you say you're going to put turn lanes in there, the slow people no. down, whatever, okay. I'm just saying. Uh, that part of town, if you try and take something away from it, you've got historical buildings on both corners and drugstores on other corners. So I don't want to mess with the historical buildings. So, and when they go, these trucks that you say are having a problem, go up Q35, they run into that roundabout, which they can't get through mm -hmm. because they have to back up and turn around. It's not big enough for them. So don't send them up 235. Send them up 201. It's a public road. I don't think we can stop or, them. What does Tip City do with their trucks? What's that? Tip City sends them someplace else. They're not going to get You think that everybody on Facebook is making stupid comments, and that wasn't what I was asked to say, even though I think, yeah, it's kind of stupid. But I was also told that Mr. Lowry Sr. was the one that got his panties in a wad coming to a meeting because he was held up in traffic. To that, I okay. will say... No, we're going to stop right now. Okay, I just want to say there's Pike Street, there's Clay Street. We've got it on record. Look. All right. We've got a meeting, and this is what this was set for, June 14th at 6 o'clock at the firehouse just for this purpose. This is getting out of hand and kind of ridiculous, to be honest. Okay. And let's start, once again, hold on, Mr. Lathley, once again, this, you know, like I said, this is so blown out of proportion, Ms. Campbell, it's not even funny. But with that being said, we are going to move forward because we've been on this topic for almost a half an hour now. So with that being said, Mr. Mayor. This whole board is ridiculous. Thank you. I think Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Thank you. I will have to answer what she said. I don't talk about your panties, and I don't wear panties, okay? That's enough. Don't no. Stop. I had nothing to do with calling for any kind of anything on that street. I spoke to a gentleman right there several years ago about an accident that I almost saw, as I said, a car going through parking places and turning right and almost hit a woman walking across the street. Well, she had a walk zone with the gun, but the gentleman couldn't see when he made a right-hand turn. I didn't call for any study. I spoke to him. He said, Rick, if you do that, put the yellow down there, then you do take away the parking places. And, that, and it was dropped. That's what it was. I don't care about the traffic turn left. I go around the traffic. I feel people get stuck in it, but when I know it's that time, I go the other direction. So, whatever she said is not true. It did not happen. I know where it came from. And I know who they who they got it from. They lied. Plain and simple. Thank you, Mr. Lowry. Anyone else? Questions on anything other than this <laughs> topic? Go to the podium, please, Mr. Hall. Don Hall, 205 North Scott Street. Um, I know we have a dead horse in the room, obviously, but I am the son of a small business owner. Um, I realize what it's like uh, when you don't always know if you're going to get paid on the 1st and 15th, so I do understand the emotion and concerns with our business owners. I just have very basic questions. First, for the Rite Aid, I really think you just need to find out who the attorney was that drafted the contract. They, they're bound to keep copies of any documents in case of a civil suit. So it's a mere just finding out, and maybe Rite Aid through their districts can figure out whoever drafted the contract. Uh, that might help that question. 
The second, I, it's great that the administration and council seems extremely opposed to the parking being eliminated from downtown. I think in anticipation of preparing for the 14th June, 14 June meeting, um, not talking about contingency plans, but is there a chance that a turn lane will happen? So right there, right, so basically, I mean, just imagine that you're, you're you all your it. eggs are in this little business down there, and whether it's Comfort and Joy or, you know, headquarters or whatever, how much support do we need at this meeting? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's there, there's not, it's a proposal, so there's no support for it. There's no support against it. It's who comes and says, so, you know, so it's, so just to be clear, and I know how we talked about this a couple yep. weeks ago, ODOT has the final decision. No, no ODOT no. does not have the final decision. We have final. We do. City Council has the final decision. Yes. Is that is that what is on the record that we are going to propose something to ODOT and then we're going to vote on it's, it on it's council? The, it's the, based on public comment period of that federal public meeting. ODOT will tally those up and then they will make the recommendation on okay, the public doesn't want this, they do want this. They said, let's try this and then that's when we'll look at the, some other things. Okay, so contingency plans go from the 14th June meeting, but essentially what I, I just want to try be, to eliminate the confusion on Facebook and other multimedia things. The city is not going to vote on whether or not a turn lane is going to be implemented. Correct. ODOT is going to make the decision off of public outcry. Pretty we much. We will be able to say if we want the turn lane or not. All right, people are making a mountain out of the overall. Thank you so much for coming to explain it. All right. Okay. You show up to the meeting, you voice your opinion. If we have 50,000 citizens that show up and say, I want that turn lane, then guess what's going to happen? The turn lane's going to go in. So if people yeah. show up saying, we don't want the turn lane, they're not going to happen. Okay. ODOT's not going to Nobody. come to us and say, hey, we're putting the turn lane in whether you like it or not. That's not going to happen. Got it. Does that make sense? Yes. So basically, yes. come, say yes or no, voice your opinion. Okay. I have a, a, I'm not speaking ahead of anyone, but I'm almost positive there is not a single person in this room, including myself, this gentleman, or any seven up there, that one, any of this parking space is gone. For right. The traffic signals. And, and that's great. And we are all on the same page in this one. And I Every fully one. support that. I'm just sure. hoping that, and I know, you know, you're doing your due diligence as a city manager, but if there is a chance for a turn lane to be implemented, if somehow, you know, we get a thousand people that show up that are a bunch of truck drivers and say, I want a turn lane in here, is there it's a contingency plan that we're at least in thinking about? Because it would significantly damage the city if this all the city, I mean, from real estate perspective, my dad is a, is a property developer. This is a major, major thing. And a lot of small towns are dealing with this so I just hope I know there's a lot of hypotheticals out there but there's several 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 these small towns that are 200 years old that are all dealing with these turn issues and state routes with semis and everything else so I just hope that we're you know our attorneys are doing their due diligence to find out you know doing case study you know just just to make sure that we can at least give the the just good feeling to our business owners that we are thinking about contingency plans we're going to fight the turn lane I think if they heard that, I don't think there would be as much of an outcry on Facebook. Well, but they heard that Dave, initially. Hold on, Mr. Leslie. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Leslie. Hold on, Mr. Leslie. Thank you. From day one, That's what I was getting ready to say, Mr. Hall. Is, I mean, if the last meeting wasn't enough, okay, they came to this meeting. They just heard it again, the second meeting in a row. If that's not enough, I don't know what else you want from us. I mean, we've every single one of us have said we're not for it. Yeah, if that's the case, then why doesn't count the Nixus and the Nixus and the right now? Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. So, excuse me. So, you want me to tell everyone else in the city that even though even though you don't agree, you want me to tell the rest of the city, you want us to tell everyone in the rest of the city, we don't care about your opinions. We only care about the people that own a business. That's not what I'm saying, but you guys have all just said that there's not a single person here in this room uh, on council in the city that, is, that wants these turn lights and that you have conversations in Correct. So, why don't you go ahead and do that now? Have we had on numerous subjects people told us, well, 
the city never gave us the chance to uh, to uh, speak our mind on the subject, or you didn't let us know about this. I'm not saying anyone in this room, but in general, it's, it's repeat on every subject, whether it's trash, the street repair. You didn't tell us, um, you didn't give us the chance to speak about it. So now we're doing it, and now people want to take that away. You can't have it both ways. And if I could just interrupt, and if you want to go on the record, sir, you, you know, all, all I'm saying is that, you know, obviously people are going to be very spun up and passionate on Facebook because, you know, just like Abe's Treasures, you know, they just invest a lot of money into redoing a business. So, I mean, from a business platform, you know, you just, you want that sense of security that I'm investing into the community. I just hope that people are looking out for us. So I, I think that... Completely you know, understandable. Okay. I just think it's completely fair to have an open forum where everybody can come and speak their piece. Okay. My opinion. So, so basically, we, we, de we need as much people ticked off on Facebook as possible. No. So they show up to the 14 June meeting, right? As long as you... With accurate, with accurate information. Absolutely. And that's, I, 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 that's why I set this up as a question base. I wanted to know the question. I'm sorry, Mr. Bridge. I said, did somebody put on, we had an ordinance in town that we've only had five eateries in town. And I yeah. laughed at that when somebody told me. That's what a uh, business owner who owns a restaurant said in this town. And that was me. And I'd appreciate if you direct your comments directly to the speaker. Didn't know it was you. I was just uh, having a side conversation here. But if that was you. Well, it's just I, very I, ironic, Mr. Bridge. Very Mr. ironic. Hall, Mr. Hall. Okay. We're going to move on. I would like that noted on the record. I'm sorry, we have minutes, so it would be right there. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Yes, you are. The, the comment being addressed is, is that Mr. Hall made a comment that New Kalau only allows five restaurants in New Kalau, which is completely absurd. Ridiculous. So that was what that was all about. Moving on. Trish, nice to see you. Thank you. You as well. All of you. Thank you. Um, I want you to know this is not just business people. This has gotten oh we need some more sound here okay I haven't said anything to anybody I don't believe in proselytizing although maybe signs could be considered such anyway everybody that has come in I am telling you they've had some real harsh comments Nobody, not one, has, and um, you know, I don't have that many, not one has said that uh, they're in favor. They are in favor of uh, young people being able to push strollers and be safe on the main block. They're in favor of. Uh, a bike path. See, I, I don't feel like I can say a lot of these things because I don't know exactly, but they have said a lot, and not one of them said that they want to, um, you know, have a turn lane and lots of parking, and I'm sure that... Uh, I'm not on Facebook. I don't do that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you really have to pay attention to what's the truth if, if you are. I don't know, and I'm not going to be on there. So anyway, what I'm telling you, my customers do care. All of the people, I mean, these are people in town, people of all ages, elderly people, um, as I said, young people with strollers, and I know at least a dozen families that either have lived here for a long time or have recently come to town in the, even the last year that have young families. And they came because they wanted to be in a downtown that they thought was moving ahead. And I think we can do that. Um, as far as the lights go, if it doesn't interfere and it's a positive thing, why not? safety and the ability for people to go back and forth without their hands being held, that, that's
that's what we need. Thank you. Thank you, Trish. Appreciate it. I'll get to, I'll get to next. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, Mike. Nice to see you. Nice to see you guys, too. I just want to leave this on a positive note. I came here not knowing what the city council had planned for this. I think what I've heard tonight is very positive. You guys sound like you are on us business owner side. I do agree that we have to keep it just like it is. We have to let people vote, but it's all more, all the more important that us business owners come together on a friendly basis and we stand together when we need to. But the one thing I do want to say is I honestly, I've been in this town my whole entire life. My parents were business owners and now my husband and I are too. And when Randy Bridge came to this city, it was a great thing. When Randy became may or city manager, Randy and I had a talk. I asked Randy to walk with me through our downtown businesses, introduce himself, um, let us businesses know that he does care about us, and he did that. So the way I look at tonight's meeting is I don't think Randy's going to let us down. I don't think Mike's going to let us down. And I think we all need to be positive and stand together on a positive note. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ledford. Did, uh, excuse me real quick. Did you, Mr. Collier, did you get her? No, I did not. Can you give us your address and everything? Six White Pine Street. Um, I know when this is all started and they were talking about, you know, whether there's the parking in the city parking lot. Um, has anybody really looked at that parking lot lately? We're, if you, uh, <laughs> yes, we have. If the, Very rare. Thank you. At the yeah. last uh, meeting, well, I'll tell you what, do you want to touch on that? I'm already working on it with a couple companies to get some parking spaces designed a little bit better for turning in there and possibly making it one way, but that's kind of leaning against that now. So yeah, we've been in the mix of trying to get it the right way, so we do it, guardrail, parking blocks, uh, seal-coated, all nine yards, it's done and done right one time. Okay, because then the other thing, thing that kind of goes along with that, if we had to utilize that, that parking lot, the alleyway, if people were expected to walk all the way around, that alleyway needs a lot of work done to it also to make it safe for people to actually walk through there, especially someone who is elderly or handicapped or whatever. So, and like in the winter time, if it's icy and stuff, this is all things that need to be kind of thought out too. Uh, I'm for the lights. I think the lights would be great. I'm not for taking away the parking. The, the downtown area is uh, kind of a special place. Now, somebody mentioned the light in Medway. I think they do have the left turn lane, but they also do not allow turn on red. Yeah, right. Okay. There at uh, Lower Valley and uh, Medway Collage. And that's all I was saying. There's got to be other options out there to, right. to, to help to make the yeah. traffic flow a little better without cutting into the traffic right. and, or so, to the uh, parking lot. I do know because I've cut through there before, and it's like, oh, wait a minute, I can't turn on the 675 without waiting for the light to turn green. <laughs> Mr. Reynolds has a question or comment for you, I believe. It was about the parking lot. It was more towards the city administration. Uh, you have that pole as a municipal parking. Can we replace that, too? That's all part of it. Yeah. Everything. More signs, I mean, more poles. It's all It's like it. a shepherd's up. Mr. Reynolds, anyone else in the audience before we move on? Oh, sorry. Yes, you're stuck with me. <laughs> I didn't know if you were leaving or where you were no, going. No, you're not that lucky. <laughs> uh, Roy Kegley, Abe's Hidden Treasures, 100 East Jefferson Street. I uh, run off Sally Kateri. Um, you all know how I feel about the turn lanes, totally against them, all that good stuff. Um, the traffic lights, I don't want to be that dead horse in the bush. I mean, we've done it enough. Um, but the traffic lights, I guess my concern, it's not that I'm so much against the, the traffic lights, but we 
we're going to start the construction after the Heritage of Flight Festival, right during the Christmas shopping season, which is like my big season. And I know when we put in these traffic lights, they're going to be busting up, putting in the concrete bases and so forth. It's going to destroy my front door, my traffic flow. No, they won't be going in in the winter time. It'll be in the spring. Yeah, it's in spring. next year. It, it will be. It'll be after the Christmas season, but it'll be done before the next Heritage of Flight. That's their only goal is to be done. Before so the no next construction Heritage. will be done prior to. Right, January right. 1st. It, we're going to be ordering. We sell it that July, August. It takes almost uh, three, four months to get the poles in. And I would strongly urge council and whoever has to make the decision, do not go with those ugly eyesores that were pictured in that brochure that was put out, to at least go with something that looks halfway classy because those things are like something you see across an interstate and they are just eyesores. Nope. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You shut me down. Funston. Um, I just wanted to thank the uh, administration and the council and the sheriff's department, they're not here anymore, and the fire department for last weekend uh, for continuing the uh, walk to remember that Lee Weaver started, I don't know, 20 some years ago. Um, I appreciated all the flags on Main Street. I appreciated the ceremony at the at the cemetery. Wanted to thank the Eagles for the wonderful, generous, delicious lunch, which hardly anybody attended. Um, I think we as a community have forgotten to remember. I, I am most appreciative of the council people who participated in the parade and everybody who had any part in making that happen. I just wish that the rest of the community would be more um, involved. Yes, yes. It used to be a lot bigger uh, event and I think we're just forgetting what we're all about. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Anyone else? Anyone? All right. Moving on to committee reports, none tonight. Resolutions, none tonight. Ordinances, we have zero introductions, two with action tonight. Mr. Collier, if you would, please. Ordinance 17-18, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending the estimated resources of the city of New Carlisle that will be available to appropriate for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2017. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Reynolds. My bad, guys. Uh, move to adopt ordinance 17-18. Second. I think it was Mr. Lefley's who I heard first. Who was it? He was second. Okay. Yeah. All right. Explanation of this ordinance, um, almost like a housekeeping ordinance, every time that um, we need to increase our estimated resources, we have to do legislation to do that. This particular ordinance, we will be increasing our general fund, our special revenue fund, and our debt service fund. We do that every year, especially with the debt service to make those payments. Um, but this year, however, we got the lawsuit settlements back from our Kennedy Trust and also our uh, the sell of the Queen Creek loss. That's two hundred seventy thousand dollars that we're going to put down back towards our debt payment. So that's why we have this legislation in place today, with a few other things that are on there as well. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions or comments? Ready to vote, Mr. Collier, when you're ready. Mr. Craver. Yes, Mr. Mayor Lowers. I did. Vote. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear. Hold on. It's already going. It's already going. I think so you have a comment. Uh, yeah. Go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm definitely very pleased to see us paying down the debt. I mean, I know that Randy and I have talked about this for since yes. at least 2015 continuously, and I could probably beat that debt worse more than it should have been. But I'm definitely not paying down the debt. So, thank you. I apologize. It's quite alright. Mr. Braver. Oh, I want to make another decision there. 
Yes. Mayor Lauer. Yes. Mr. Rick. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Lighting. Yes. Mr. Rick Lauer. Yes. Mr. Lethley. Yes. Ordinance 17-18 passes 7-0. Thank you, sir. Moving on to Ordinance 17-19. Mr. Mayor. You got to read. I got to read it first. <laughs> Red light again. That excited for new for guys, an email address? You guys in a hurry? <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Ordinance 17-19 public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance supplementing certain appropriations in New Carlisle City Ordinance 17-11P. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Sir. Move that we accept Ordinance 17-19. Second. Second. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lightweight. Any questions or comments, Council? Yes, Mr. Lighting. An explanation to this ordinance, audience, just how we have to do to the legislation to increase our appropriations. We also have to do legislation, basically the same thing that says, all right, now we are allowed to spend it. Council, Mr. Lindsay. I want to follow up with what Mr. Reynolds says. I'm glad to see that we are paying down the debt because I too want the debt gone. I think we've had a conversation or two. Sure. Keeps, uh, but I keep saying, well, we can. No, there is no fun. It's always I agree with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad to see that we have, you know, this uh, 270 million we can stick on our debt. Uh, Mr. Reynolds. Do you know how much debt is left mm -hmm. on the big bonds? Any chance? Oh. Um, I want to say, oh, hold on, Mr. Reynolds. I will get that information. And then my follow-up question is that. Now that we're improving in section 270, we're also going to still spend the 90 that we normally spend, correct? Yeah, we cannot put that 270 as one payment. Oh, no, no, that's not so that's going to go 90 a year, 90. So we're not going to take anything out of our general fund to replace that. We just can't send them 270. There are oh, yeah. no early calls on that. We can, but then we're going to get penalized. Yeah. You know, I so we don't. I to make sure we continue. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just had this out. We're currently 630 minus the 270. Nice. Getting there. We're getting there. Mr. Lindsay has a comment. Mr. Britt. Yes, sir. You just stated that we are not making double payments on these because there's a fee involved. No, what I said is you can't take that 270 and just say, here, put this to my debt. You still have to continue on making your yearly payments. We don't have to take it out of our general fund. It's already there. So for the next X amount of years, we're not going to have to reallocate $90,000 out of our general fund like we've done in the past. Okay, so this is just going to sit in that line item until it's all so exhausted. The 255 is? The what? The 255000 is going to sit there. You should apply that debt there. It's going to stay in that line item. We'll spend 90000 of it out. We'll spend another $90,000 and 90000 of it out. We're not going to just sit mailed in a check for 270 say, take this off our balance. You can't do that. What would it cost us to do that? Why can't we do that? Because there's no Is calls, there's no early call out for it. There's, that particular loan, how it's set up, given what it is, there is no early call out. There is no early payment. So we're Take that up with whoever took the bond so, out first. So, so basically what you're telling me is we cannot make two payments since you're $90,000 on this loan and take $90,000 out of this amount plus the $90,000 we was going to pay. That two seventy is not is, is money that we got from those lawsuits. Right. We'll sit in that line item. We will pay our debt payment out of that two seventy until to that line item is no longer there. Then we're going to start transferring that money back out of the general fund to pay for right. So for three years you won't pay out of the general fund. Right. right. So it's, 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 I, I was under the impression, sir, that we were going to send them the two hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars plus a ninety thousand dollar payment mm -hmm. for this year. So you're saying we can't do that. So if, I was just Mr. Just blood pressure blows. <laughs> Real quick follow up. Uh, Mr. Bridge, uh, my question is: Is what type of fees would be associated? I have to look into it. Okay, because I mean, if we could, I would prefer us mm -hmm. to figure out what the fee would be, and then maybe you know, pay all that down. Because we're already going to expend that ninety thousand regardless. Uh, I would. I mean, there. depends if the fee is going to cost more than the long term payoff. Then obviously no, but if it's going to be a little less. I mean. When I, I mean, when I bought my first car, I was like, oh, for my car payment's only $135. I'm going to make $800. I only have to pay on it for a year.
six or eight months instead of four years, like two months, whatever it was. So I just trying to get earlier. Well, yeah, but I just want to see like if you can sure. get those numbers just to see if you don't mind. Sure. Then maybe the contract states that you can't do it at all. Period. No. Then I, is that what you're saying? Is that well? That, well he, he said that there could be. Fees. I'll look into it. I, I don't want this to get all switched and words get blown out of proportion. Yeah. So let me look at it. I'll get a report back to council by the end of the week. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you, gentlemen. Good answer. Um, where are we at? Are we on the vote? Yeah, we're on the vote. Mr. Collier. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Leffler. Yes. Mr. Craybar. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Lighting. Yes. Order 1719 passes 7 to 0. Thank you, sir. Moving on to another business. When you're ready. Yes. Let me run through. I have a couple other items to add to it. Uh, Congressman Warren Davison will hold mobile, mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. to 2 p.m. As we have covered already, being the public meeting on the new traffic signal upgrade project is Wednesday, June 14th, beginning at 6 p.m. at the New Carlisle Firehouse Fire Station. Crime Watch will be this Wednesday, 6 7 17. And that's been moved up from when they normally have it due to the public hearing next week. So, Crime Watch will be this Wednesday here at Smith Park Shelter House starting at 6 30. And if you want to mark it on your calendars, the one for next month is scheduled for 7 12, which is also a Wednesday night. Community cleanup Saturday, uh, 6 10 this Saturday from 8 a.m. to noon at the Old Westlake School location. And just to note, Farmer's Market will begin Saturday, June 24th, along and that's the same day you'll have a community garage sale on Saturday, June 24th. That's it, Mayor. Mr. Lauer. Yeah, I have one. Um, I do realize there's a meeting next week on Wednesday the 14th. I, would, I will be there. Um, I'd like to remind everybody that is the same day that the American Legion has the flag retirement. Last year they retired over 14,000 flags. Uh, quite a sight. Sadly, I, I'm, I'm going to ask everybody to go, but you got to be here too. And if you leave here at 8 o'clock, you will never get a parking place up there at 8 o'clock. I mean, I, it's probably not. But if you have a chance to make it, please do it. Awesome sight. Oh, um, Mr. Don't turn. Go ahead. No, I'm not going to turn. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I got a question, Gene or Mike. Uh, when is the Heritage Festival? Is that a different time this year? Yeah, the uh, festivals fell on a funny time this year, so we had to adjust. It's the 29th, 30th, and October the 1st. What he said. Oh, okay, so it's almost the same. Okay, yeah. 29th, 30th, and October the 1st. Okay, somebody asked that. Okay. okay. And, and, I just wanted to speak on a little bit of something. Just give me about two minutes to do this. And, um, you know, I troll Facebook. You know, anybody that sees me on Facebook, they know I, I troll. You know, and I, and I watch what people say. Now, I wanted to make a comment on two things. One, there's a lot of misinformation out there, and don't always believe what you see. You know, um, there, there's two incidents. One, uh, there was an instance of a lady that they that uh, they said that the sheriff department did not um, respond to a 911 call, and there were several calls that day, and the, and she ended up in Lee's parking lot, and they said that you know it was like uh, tried to take my van, tried to steal my van, and. The, when they tried to steal the van, they called. They said they called 911, and they never showed up. That, that's a fake. That was totally blown out. And then somebody got on and says, "Well, she's on crack, or she's on heroin, and she's on drugs." It, tur it turned out there were six calls to 911 that day, and there were six responses to those calls from 911 that day. I personally talked to the person a major at the sheriff department and he gave me the records for the calls that day and the incidents reports that was reported and that lady what had a mental issue and they ended up taking her to the hospital for that mental issue you know and she was trying to seek help is what she was trying to do if you had talked to her long enough 
there was another one that came up that um, the person that I do know, and she said that I went to IGA and there were two squad cars and two ambulances and looking over this body that was in a car. And they were probably given a Narcon and it was a drug addict, probably overdosed, they should have let him die. That's a waste of, of resources, somebody said. And after about 20 or 30 responses, one of the EMTs got on and says, I was one of the EMTs that responded to that call. That was a heart attack. And I said, and I, I responded back, I said, did you use the Lucas tool? He said, yes, we were able to bring that person back. That was not a wasted resource. I'm telling you this, a lot of stuff, a lot of information on Facebook is not real. People assume a lot of things. They, a friend of mine, you know, a very good friend of mine, fell down and was sitting on the sidewalk. He has Parkinson's disease. He could not get up. <clears throat> and people walked around him. They said, I saw somebody overdose on the, on the sidewalk the other day. And my comment was, why didn't you help him, help him up or find out if he needed help? Oh, I don't want to get involved. Well, too bad. If you want to solve the drug problem, get involved. But don't assume that it's an overdose. Don't assume it. Those two people, now reputation in this town, is gone gone just because of Facebook. I'm finished. Thank you, sir. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you, you have something besides your journey? Okay, real quick. Um, I just want to say something. Look, everyone up here, I, in my opinion, uh, even though we don't always agree, I think everyone up here, and including the administration side, has nothing but best interest in this city. Uh, we don't always agree on things, and that's why there's seven of us. So, if we don't agree, it works out, and it's a fair and even vote every time. Um, you know, on that side, these guys, you know, I think Randy, you know, some of us council members, all of us at times, I'm sure, take a beating from the public. Um, I'm not going to sit in here and let anybody uh, use harsh tone towards anybody in here. Um, if anybody, if people can't come in here and and have a respectful voice towards any of these council members, any of the administration side, you need to rethink before coming in here because I'm not going to put up with it. Uh, you know, everyone up here deserves as much respect as vice versa to you. Uh, so. If we, if we all can't get together and have a respectful conversation on, on popular topics that are very controversial, um, you know, I think we need to just step back and take a breath sometimes because it gets a little out of hand and it looks very unprofessional for people that may watch these videos of how our citizens, and, and, and sometimes even on this side of the table, I've, I've seen people that don't act as professionals, maybe they should. So with that being said, it's, everyone keep that in mind. When we come up to the podium or when we're on this side of the table, we're on that side of the table. There's no reason to 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 get you know out of control here. We're all here for the same reason to take care of the city that we live in and make it the best place possible. Mr. Mayor. Uh, I hope that everybody understands that I have nothing but the utmost respect for the business people in this town. That is absolutely true. I made no comment about anyone being stupid. But I do know there is a lot of stupid comments on Facebook, and I will stand by that. Mr. Lindsay. Move, Major. Thank you, sir. Uh,